We are back. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. John Sparacco here and co-host. Yo, yo, yo. Looking sharp. LSU. Basketball's back. I don't or football's back, I should say. Yeah. I don't know if you're watching it, whether you're protesting it, but it's on. <laughs> it's it's back on. Just showing love to my boys in the South, man. Surviving another hurricane. Say hello to some people here in the crowd. What's up, Seth? Seth, we'll bring you on later if we can. I got the new program. Pretty simple. Pat Moore, what's up, Daniel? You know, guys, we did a we did the webinar today on kind of the rollout of Virtue Health and what we're doing for guys. So we want to go recap it and go through it again today. Uh, I think the uh, the session was about twenty minutes earlier. Really quick. But uh, we thought we'd take any questions that you guys have, put it in the chat below. We are live on Facebook and I believe YouTube. So go ahead and put them in the chat below. Say hello if you're watching from YouTube here. So those that don't know, we had a recent change here uh, to, let's see here, to Virtue Health from a chief, formerly Chief Health Alliance. And today I want to talk about you know, the evolution of what we're doing for a lot of advisors out there, helping them win and retain self-funded business. So I got a little deck here. I don't usually do a deck, but we're going to go through it. Let's begin. And if you are a disclosure, know-it-all broker and do it all yourself and only want to do it yourself, that's fine. <laughs> might not be, might not be a good fit for you today. Uh, some guys have been doing it self and decided, hey, this is a lot easier. We're going to talk about a guy who generate about seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue after partnering with us in the past 12 months me even bring him on later tonight who knows we'll see if we can get him on let's see here so i just want to real quick talk about the opportunity if you don't know it already opportunity is huge in the self-funded marketplace you see here is only 17 percent from three to you know 199 or self-funded 200 to a thousand only 58 percent and in reality at 58%, the, probably the top end of the market is is really one that's uh, self-funded. So from that space of 100 or up to 200, there's not many people that are self-funded. So the point I want to get across is, is the opportunity is huge. It still is. You can still go into groups and talk about self-funding. They either never heard of it, didn't do it. It never ceases to amaze me. Uh, if you want to look at that from a premium level, we're talking about one trillion dollars in fully insured premiums right now that you could convert to self-funding. So, again, not everybody is a fit for it, but lots of opportunity. Agenda for today, we just want to go about who we are, how we help advisor, why it works, and a little bit about what makes us different, right? So, go ahead, Craig. You want to say something? I was going to say, well, a trillion dollars, man. That, that's like, uh, that's Pizza Hut money, man. That's it? <laughs> uh, a little bit about me, if you guys don't already know. Started out in the basement. I'm here cold calling, banging phones a couple years back. Good fun <laughs> times. Thought I knew everything. Didn't know shit. Was pitching self-funded. That was just shtick that we went with. And I still think in today, you, that could be the shtick that you're going with. You may see stuff online and LinkedIn, but... That's just the people on there. Not everybody's talking about it. Uh, those that know me, I'm just like you. If you're watching the show here. And uh, along the way, learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes. And, uh, you know, this this process and helping guys kind of created virtue health out of pure necessity to help advisors. And, uh, you know, we wanted to help advisors win and retain business. And there's a lot that can go wrong with the self-funded account. So having the support staff, experts uh, is important. A couple of checks here that I delivered, shit, probably three or four, three years back now. But just a little bit about that. You guys already know me, uh, but here's some of the organizations that I'm a self-funded expert for, some of the books, the cover, just give you credibility here. But here, here's what we notice, okay? Most advisors live in the world that I lived in, the know-it-all world, right? And I can tell you first and foremost is I was wrong. I was spending only 25% of my time prospecting, marketing, building relationships, generating sales, and I was spending too much time 
on learning and developing, trying to be the expert, trying to know everything about everything, talking to every vendor in the market. Okay. Too much time on customer service. Now, Squirrel. Yeah, shiny objects. We'll talk about them later. Now, was I doing well? Yeah, I look at it like I was an all-star, right? You're an all-star advisor, but you never, you never won the championship. Okay. Not to say you weren't doing good, but you could do better. And that's the point of what I want to talk about today. Um, what I noticed when I started doing virtual health and the wholesale side is the top advisors were spending 73% of the time on average selling, marketing, prospecting, building relationships. And that's really what we do and where we should live. And only 12% on personal development and learning and 13% on customer service. Now, how is it? Well, they had the team around them. Okay. There wasn't, there's not many times where I talked to advisors that had more business than me that I didn't know more than them, but that didn't matter. They had the people around them that knew everything. And the reality was, is they knew a shit ton more than their client and prospect. They may not know every detail, but they knew enough to get the ball across the, the line here. And I kind of, you know, me and Craig were talking about it to put it in perspective is Craig, you want to cover this analogy here? Who are these guys? <laughs> Where are you going, man? We're talking about some all-time ballers here. MJ, Michael Jordan. Okay. The guy was a beast when it counted. If anybody uh, is watching hoops right now, right? You just saw what uh, happened to the Los Angeles Clippers, who since the start of the season, it was almost ordained that the Lakers and the Clippers were going to end up in the Western Conference Finals. And the Clippers were up three to one against the Denver Nuggets. And they just thought all they had to do was show up to win. And it turns out they lost three in a row, had their ass handed to them, and they, they choked. When it got down to crunch time, they didn't handle it right, right? So MJ's famous for being a band, 6-0 and in the finals. Arguably, you know, the best player of all time. Played both sides of the ball. Shaq, Shaq, man, I've got a ball signed by him when he was an Orlando guy at my house, yeah. Shaq, man, most dominant player ever in basketball. Hits you with his shoulder, you fly six feet. But what people don't realize is, is these two guys were all stars, had all the accolades and all the awards except the championship. What you don't remember is ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan played in this league for nine years. Shaquille O'Neal played in the league for nine years or in the ninth year. Both of them finally won the championship. Okay? Thanks for the thanks for the prompt. Yeah. Until this guy came around and put the team around him and coached him up and strategy and let them be the all star. They didn't win the championship, guys. So those that think you could do it out there, sure, you could do it. You could be hey, an all-star. I, uh, let me give you some trivia here. I didn't tell you, John. So the assistant coach that Jackson hired that MJ and the Bulls ran their offense, and then when Jackson left and went to the Lakers, they also ran this offense. It was called the triangle offense. And the coach that he brought, to the Bulls and to the Lakers was a guy named Tex Winter, who was my college coach. I ran that triangle offense. So uh, just a little trivia for you. Yeah, and, and the point of this here is, is you can't do it alone. Can you win? Sure, you can win. You can get accolades. You, you can, can make money. You mean you all-star team? Not as much as we could with a coach. Yeah, and, and I realized... I realized that being in a wholesale side is, is maybe I was doing it wrong. I'm sure I was doing it wrong. And, you know, do you want to start winning now? Take a look at this guy, Tom Brady. Well, he had Bill Belichick and a team around him out the gate to start. And what did he do? He won a championship the first year. So he was an all-star. People wanted to call him a system quarterback, but you saw that wasn't the case. He went on to win six championships. Uh, so the point of the story is you can't do it alone if you want to win that championship. Uh, let's talk about some of the consequences. Those that don't know, you should know some of the consequences of doing this stuff alone, doing this stuff without the proper support. Lost, in, uh, lost selling and prospecting time is number one. We talked about that already. That's first and foremost, but it's a steep learning curve, guys. This shit is not simple. It's not one, two, three. You know, Craig talks about the five-star meal. Yeah, you can have the ingredients, but 
that doesn't mean it's going to come out right. It's a long learning curve. And what are the consequences of the learning curve? Well, what happened to me? I lost customers. I stressed out employees. They later quit. I lose credibility. Uh, my employers lost money on some of the partners that I put with that didn't execute and perform. And I lost out in revenue because I lost the client. So the question is, don't you have enough to worry about? These are some of the consequences that you'll face if you haven't already faced them. I mean, I talk to five to 10 brokers a week. We hear all the horror stories. You guys are probably shaking your head. You know, you've been through them. Nothing's perfect. It's kind of like poker. You never play a perfect game, but you want to eliminate as many mistakes as you can each time you play. It's never perfect. Okay. Um, so like my grandma would say is please stop it guys. Stop trying to do it alone. Uh, it's just not going to work as smooth. If you have a strategic partner like us, like virtue health, that's what the story is today. If you haven't picked up on it, but we're helping advisors win and retain self-funded business. And it's not just from a product standpoint, forget about the shiny objects. Cause that's not what it's all about. Yes, the solutions are important. Can they be executed? But there's a lot more that goes into it, which we're going to talk about today from the process side and the sales strategy side. So just to give you a quick background, again, Virtual Health Achieve, uh, a formerly Achieve Health Alliance. We started out with a consortium of like-minded employers back in 2017, just past the, we're in the fourth year of that now, that program. But 2018, we realized we needed to help advisors kind of sell and market this strategy. So we released this show, Heads Up Advisor, right? 2019, people asked, can you just give me a turnkey health plan? Didn't want to be in the TPA world, but hey, it's what you guys wanted. It's what we built. Those that need it, great. Those that have their own, that's great too. So we built the health plan. In 2020, we realized there needs to be more support on the sales end side with employers, preliminary underwriting, quoting, so on and so forth is we want to help you with that. Take that off your plate so you can go out and do what? Market and sell in 2020, 2021. We're looking forward to what we're doing here at Virtue Health. Support team here. You guys already know me, Zach Jones, VP of sales. A lot of experience uh, on the wholesale side, dealing with employers, pharmacy, RBP side, self-funded side. He's out there pitching employers on a daily basis with advisors talking about the self-funded strategies and solutions. Let us give you some assistance with some of those calls. If you need the help, we're here to prepare you for it. David Kessler, our weakness was underwriting, understanding it. He's underwritten over thousands of cases. He's done RFPs and stop loss quoting on thousands and thousands of cases. Okay. Countless. We will never have the experience that he has. He's now, available to you on any of your cases to help you and sit on your side of the table. No, you don't have to hire an in-house underwriter. You now have one. Okay. We've taken on that expense for our partners. Okay. The advisory team. Oh, who's that guy? So of course, oh. sales, Craig gives yeah, us some, some advisory and especially on the sales side. What can I say? Nobody's out there pitching more than Craig. What are you doing? Three to five a day right now? You know it. All yep. day, every day. Gary Bender, our good friend Gary, if you don't know, go back and listen to his podcast. He likes to give us a CFO perspective. So we're going to utilize him a lot on what we're doing here. Uh, let's go into it, how we help. We talked a little bit about it, the strategy and consulting on the deals that come in, the experience in the marketplace, the support, and the training. But what do we do on that day-to-day -day basis? Obviously, vetting the partners, first and foremost, is really how Virtue Health started. A lot of people were asking me, well, how are you doing this self-funding? What are you doing? I see this stuff on LinkedIn. Who are you using? Hey, give me the shortcut. That's what people wanted. And it was smart. Take the shortcut. Learn from other people's mistakes. So that's something that we do regularly, bringing other partners and strategy solutions to the table for you guys. Stop loss marketing. Marketing. Obviously, we have more than one market and we're handling it from A to Z. When those groups come in, David's looking at them from an underwriting standpoint, figuring out what's going on with the case, who is the right player for it, what we need to do to mitigate this, that, or the other. Or, hey, a renewal just came in. Is the renewal fair? Do you really know if the renewal is fair? Have you un ever underwritten a case? Do you know what a manual is? Do you know what blending the manual is? Well, 
If you don't, you probably need an underwriter on your team to tell you this is a fair renewal, take it, or it's a good renewal, take it and get it signed as soon as possible, or it's a shitty renewal and we got to put some pressure on it or we need to shop it. That's going to be on your side of the table. You don't have to figure that out on your own. You don't need to hire people to do it. We're going to help you with that. The RFP management, uh, employer negotiation, slop dolls renewal, we covered it last week. Listen, it's not a super easy process. There's a lot of work involved. Let us help you with that and work them start to finish for you. We've laid out a nice little roadmap. Take a picture if you don't have it. That's what it looks like, guys. And our proposal process working with us. Somebody asked me today, what do I do? You know, whether you got a prospect out the gate that you want sales help on, strategy help, you can call me and Craig in advance to meet with them. We'll help you with that. Maybe you already met with them and now you want to kind of work the case. And typically what happens is you submit the case in. We set up a strategy call. We have David and us. We look it over, look at what's going on with the claims. And we come up with a strategy. There's different markets, there's different plan designs, different ideas, different ways to mitigate risk, all different things that you may or may not think of different contract terms that make the most sense is let's come up with a plan to go to market with the case. Don't just, don't just take the case, and just submit it out and hope for the best and hope for a competitive rate. That's not the strategic way to do it and the strategic way to win. Uh, we put that proposal together and we get it out to you. We go over it. So like I said, make it easy on yourself. Don't make it any harder. If I could give you guys an idea, I would tell you just based on uh, experience, do a code presentation. Do a presentation and leverage some of the assets that John's got in place to do a presentation together. Right. So if you're uh, a little uncomfortable or you're not 100 percent certain, whatever it is, put some of the team on the call with your prospect and do a co-presentation. I think you'll find it to be uh, very valuable. Yeah, we have we have a little bit more authority, credibility as the aggregate, uh, the aggregation of all the employers together. You may not have the size and the case studies or the results, so you can't necessarily speak from it. But we can and attach yourself to us because we've got we've got the program. We'll go over in a, in a few minutes in the membership. Uh, Take a look at this here. Uh, Virtue Health Bootcamp. We're going to be doing this again this year. You saw us do it a little bit with Self Funded Mastery last year. We're going to be providing sales scripts, consulting agreements, presentations that you don't have. We're going to help lay out all the tools and strategies and test the stuff in the market that's working with your peers around the country and continue to tweak it for you. If you attend the one next year, we're going to set a date on it, depending on the situation we're in now and when it happens. But you're going to have training materials recording stuff to go back and study that'll all be there for you guys at the boot camp high stakes advising all right it only matters if you can sell this shit right why not learn from the number one sales trainer in the world jordan belford reschedule date we are looking at february of the new year unfortunately COVID killed us this year we held out as long as we could but we're looking to start you off right in the next year, give you a break in January and come back strong in February and get after it. So be on the lookout for that. Those that signed up, we'll see you there. Virtue Mastermind, uh, something me and Craig used to do a lot of and where we met. Can't tell you how more important it is to be around your peers learning from it. Some of our top guys, producers, we're going to have annual retreats, one to two of them. We do monthly sales calls. Make sure you guys are joining them if you've been invited to them and then obviously the scripts and strategies that uh craig comes up with more than more than i can tell you we're excited actually to do some i think next week hangover part two is next week we'll see yeah. you caesar's palace september 28th and 29th las vegas got a nice suite we will be mastermind between all of you and we got some new ideas we got we got one or two little tricks up our sleeve Craig is a master of coming up at new things, so be ready. I saw it uh, two weeks ago, and I took my ass a lot of notes. A little bit about the membership here now. Expanded out, close to 10,000 members, 62 employers, 28 states. So a lot of different things we're doing with employers, case studies, actual results, proven loss ratios, and 
we can leverage that to help you sell guys make it easy on yourself leverage the proven model here um the solution suites i don't want to go into it too much but uh, we'll cover that on the next two webinars that we have coming up oh let me put my banner here where is it no next week so next thursday we're going to be doing one and the following thursday on the health plan those that have a health plan and tpa that they like that's great if you don't we've got the turnkey solution stop loss multiple relationships uh some of the contracts are exclusive no laser laser contract depending on what you need we've got you covered obviously you remember the alliance consortium that's in its fourth year we have a second consortium rolling out that is a no laser consortium that is ready for one one to go for those of you that are ready uh sourcing solutions for the pharmacy pbm partners contracts that we've reviewed and ironed out and of course trojan horse craig you know about that one it's the best hey how many guys you're helping on a day-to-day -day basis on that now well it is the uh probably the best strategy to use to cold call what would be considered jumbo cases for most brokers and you know we we help you close thousand two thousand five thousand live groups and you don't even have to be the broker that's fun wait and, and you get paid and you get paid and you never have to do an aca compliance meeting again unless of course you want to <laughs> aca i love it uh, some of the employer resources resources to drive retention, uh, we're going to be conducting quarterly and maybe more than quarterly webinar training on self-funding, on HIPAA certification, things like that for the benefits managers and CFOs throughout the year next year for virtue health employers and some prospects for you. So we'll have a symposium. Don't know the date yet because of what's going on. You've got reporting. You've got turnkey solutions that are proven for them. We plan on doing it in Dallas, Texas next year. Uh, probably August is probably what we're looking at. We'll see how things play out here. And guys, this is all to help you do what? Grow revenue, okay? Save time and resources, gain knowledge, drive down the risk of self-funding, and of course, live a better life. Stop trying to do everything yourself and uh you know make mistakes doing things yourself but you know you want more time with your family your vacation go out have fun do things travel partner with us is going to allow you to do that now i want to talk about a gentleman that that had been working with us met us about a year ago and and he was kind enough to show us his numbers here so after working with virtue health this gives you a little idea about some of the numbers Six hundred thousand in new broker record revenue sixty thousand increased client revenue because you can charge what you want when you're self-funding right charge on value sixty five thousand in consulting fees where he would have quoted it for free otherwise and i'm sure a lot of those new brs came from converting those and new client acquisition costs is hey less than an hour until he gets paid so 720,000 he estimates of new rev of revenue written after partner with us and let's bring him on here Jeez! Oh, welcome to the show it's pretty good numbers my friend well no wonder if you guys are doing a webinar i'm on <laughs> thanks for joining us yeah i mean what's it like now that the numbers i mean you came from what you were doing talk to me about Last year, you were telling me some challenges you had with other partners and what happened to some of that revenue? Well, uh, I can tell you that our cost of acquisition, that bottom right, it's down 90% because we used to do the full amount of effort for every prospect. If it looks like I've been up since 245, I have. I was on the East Coast getting onto a plane at 545. So my apologies <laughs> if I look tired. I'm not, I'm excited but I had to go meet a new client. And um, so if, if you're asking about that, the cost of acquisition is way down. We actually have less staff today and more revenue, which is that in business, that's good. And what was it like trying to figure yeah. things out or thinking you knew things with certain partners and not having the network? Oh my gosh, it cost us dearly. I mean, we had, we did not know what to do, but we knew we needed to do something to have a competitive advantage and do better in the marketplace 
you're not going to claw away a great client from a national broker without a great solution. I mean, what's your competitive advantage today? If you're offering the same stuff they're offering, then you're at a major disadvantage because they're the national brand. The CFO is sitting there safe in his position or her position because they're not taking a risk with their career on some small broker to do the same thing they're already doing anyway, right? So we knew we needed to get better solutions. The only way we were, we were gonna claw these great accounts away from these big national brokers was to do something they couldn't do or weren't willing to do. So we were looking for those solutions and we had a, a few cases in a level funded product where it, it wasn't run well and it didn't go well. And I had a year before we met you all where we had took a significant hit with three large cases, two hospitals and a, and a large contractor. And we worked our tails off. Thank God we're hardworking and we understand the sales and marketing side of the business and worked our tails off to have, a, if, if I got a trophy, it would have been, you lost more revenue than most people have in their agency and you still didn't have a down year. We, you know, we came out ahead, but we were primed and ready when we met you all and realized there are people who are doing this, who are coming up with the solutions we need so that when we market an opportunity, the worst thing in the world is to market an opportunity, get, gain the confidence of a real prospect, an ideal prospect, and then not be able to deliver because you don't have the solutions. And that's, I mean, that's all the work that you did to get in that position. It's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Or to not, to gain their confidence, they think you can deliver, and then year one is coming to a close and you really didn't deliver. Because I, I was on a trip recently, well, I guess it was, actually six, eight months ago now that Craig was on and he was, he mentioned something that stuck with me. They're really your client after they've been with you three years, you've earned their trust, you've produced results. That means you have to have enough tricks, enough solutions that you can improve their situation year over year over year. Who's going to take that account from you? They're not going to do it because they have a national brand. They have to be able to produce better results and they won't be able to with the solutions that you all have. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the ability to execute. And I don't want to just on top of, you know, solutions and things like that is, is what, what change do you think too, from the ability to uh, convey this message, right? It's not just about the solutions and the shiny object. How are you going to tell the story about this? You know? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm still less of a broker than most people probably on the call, uh, but a harder working marketer and salesperson. And, and the biggest life-changing event in my career so far has been attending your event last year and learning, well, and even having the call with you all, just setting up the call, which I have to give credit to Jessica for doing uh, prior to going to the event and learning about the Trojan horse approach. I mean, that that's earth shattering. Nobody's doing it. In fact, on this plane ride out to Cleveland this week, I read that book, one of the books that you all mentioned at your last Heads Up Advi uh, High Stakes Advising event, The Million Dollar Consultant, I think it was called. It, it's in my carry-on. I read it for the third time because it's absolutely revolutionary. It makes total sense to that CFO. You put them in such a safe space with your Trojan horse approach. They have no risk, very little friction, very little risk, all the way to the finish line where they can make an easy business decision to hire you and fire a national brand. They never, they're not taking risk. They have everything they need to make a business decision. If they make a business decision, we win. And that wasn't the case before we were asking people to go on faith in some cases on some small outfit they'd never heard of us or, and really not an or, we were spending many hours, our back end, to build a solution that we then also had to ask them to go on faith. And we built the solution without any commitments on their part that they were serious. And many times they were just using us to keep their current vendor honest, their current broker honest. They weren't serious, a serious let partner me, in the process. Let me touch on that. Yeah, I, I explain that as anybody ever watched The Voice? It's a song competition where the judges turn their back to the singer. So how they look and how they dress and all that can impact their decision. It's going to be based on their voice. So 
what I explained to a lot of the uh, larger houses, if you will, I said, so if you guys were on The Voice and, you know, ABC and XYZ and QRS, you guys were all lined up and you've got a farm D, they've got a farm D. You've got a risk of compliance. They got a risk of compliance. Uh, they got a wellness MD. You got a wellness MD. On and on. You do a free admin. They get free. Ad and by the time you're done, you all sound exactly alike. And that's why 85% of prospect meetings end up with no decision. They just keep the incumbent because it's like, well, you know, they covered all the bases. But the Trojan horse changes all that. So when you throw in Trojan horse kinds of solutions, you're the only one who sounds different. And that becomes the wedge to open up the prospect's mind to go, wow, maybe maybe I'm not aware of everything I need to be aware of. And what you talked about, the three-year rule, right? It was always my rule. You look at somebody's 5,500, it takes about three years before they go, well, you know, I'm going to get rid of this house and go to that house and this house because it takes them that long to figure out that they can't deliver on what they promised. So when you can come in and change the risk profile so it appears you're taking all the risk, not the client, not the CFO, you make it easy for them to say yes, to go, this is the only consultant I've ever heard of who puts his money where his mouth is. Whatever that story is, you need to create the wedge that truly sounds different because at the end of the day, most brokers fall into the trap of features and benefits karaoke and everybody sounds alike. And so it's kudos to you for breaking the mold because what's that do to you? I imagine your confidence is significantly higher than it was 10 months ago. Right, Paul? There is no question. I had a fun call with a CFO. I wish I'd recorded it. The people in the office came in and listened and uh, he had our letter of engagement. It's uh, I think they spend 5 million fully insured and our fee was, is $30,000. I expect we're going to get this back and get the fee uh, in the next week or so. Yeah. But you know, he's saying, well, so let me get this right. This national broker who will go unnamed uh, because their name is, but this national broker, they charge, what's your fee? And I said, uh, well, that just depends. We'll put some of it at risk. We're confident enough in what we're going to do. But you mean my fee after the consulting agreement? Like you're already imagining hiring us to handle this implementation? He said, well, yeah, that's what I mean. I said, well, it'd be $50 per employee per month. And he's doing the math in his head. So he said, you're going to charge me $330,000 and they're charging me whatever, $180,000. I said, exactly. And we're also guaranteeing our results. Do they guarantee their results? Uh, well, no, no, they don't. And I, I haven't made a CFO. If you're spending 4 million and it's going to go to 4.5 or 4.2 inclusive of my fee, which is higher than the current fee. I haven't made a CFO that really cares about that. Uh, and he laughed and he said, you know, I don't care. I'm just going to go discuss this with the president. So I want to be ready to answer his questions, <laughs> but I'm totally on board with that. And we, yeah. you deserve to make more if we're paying less. And that is a fact. So that line you use, Craig, you know, the price of everything, but the cost of nothing. <laughs> well, look, Paul, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Uh, kudos to your success. Keep it going. And we look, we look for more stories. We look Thanks for what you guys are doing. You got it, man. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Paul. So you heard from one and, uh, you know, having a lot of success, guys. Got out there. Most handsome guy out there, John Clay. The guy delivers checks on a regular like he's a bank, okay? Take it to the bank, just checking in with his clients. He's got, I don't know, six cases working with Virtue, doing some good things, exciting stuff. Uh, another gentleman who I believe is on here, Seth Denson out of Texas, took – took this Trojan horse strategy and he said, John, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was doing the consulting. I just, I wasn't charging him. And, uh, now he's doing it. He's making hundreds of thousands of revenue for his firm. And he has a guy that's successful and he's got strategies, he's got solutions, but he's still learning. And for those out there that think, well, this isn't for me. And I, I know everything. It's not the case. Okay. It's not the case. Take a look at Derek Wynn, Broker of the Year. Congrats again, Derek. Uh, you know, Derek won the award and said, hey, John, I sent me a text. I have no doubt uh, between the Facebook Lives and the event last year. 
the info that uh, I gained helped me win broker of the year. Okay. So guy that came, is always learning, getting skills sharpened. That's the way to do it. That's how the pros are doing it. That's what the guys making it happen out there are doing it. So, you know, we're excited to hear from you guys, any guys winning strategies, but again, we want to help those that we can. We got, we can accept about 10 new partners for 2000, for, fourth quarter, 2020. We did a webinar with about 200 or so people on it today. So we're excited. we got a lot of calls lined up. Those that want to work with us and partner, whether it be now or for the new year, great. Let us know, reach out. But as always, we're here to help win new business. It's not just about the solutions. Okay. At the end of the day, it's can you convey the message and be around your peers that are doing it. What do you want to add, Craig? Yeah, well, that's that's totally it, man. It's all about scoreboard. Did you win or not? Because you, you can't buy coffee at Starbucks with psychic income. So it's all about what's the way to ramp the learning curve. Look, most of you people, we don't know. We Everybody doesn't share what they do, right? So John just gave you some examples of, of brokers and advisors who shared their stories and said, Hey man, I just wanted to say, thank you. We get those random calls all the time. Most people just come on, listen to our show and they take, but they don't, you know, they don't make any deposits with us. And then randomly, uh, at some point in time, you know, they might tell us a story and go, you know, Hey, I just wanted to say thanks. Cause I, I learned this or that. And that's all good. Right. It's, it's just, we work on the you know, the basis of we will make deposits in our relationship with you first. And eventually you will want to reciprocate and do business with us. And so that's been very successful. We're going to continue that. We're out in the trenches. You know, we don't deal with theoretical. We're not professors. We actually sell this stuff every day, every week. Some of us for many, many years. And so uh, because of that, we get exposed to a lot of different ideas around the country. I sure do. I got brokers all over. And so uh, I always have conversations with them. Hey, what's what's going on with RBP in your area? Right? I was just talking to a cat the other day from Iowa. He goes, yeah, no RBP. They're so aggressive. They publish the list of every RBP vendor. And I said, if you walk in with that, you might as well walk out. You know, so you have to recognize that while it's easy to find a list of ingredients on LinkedIn or wherever about, oh, just do this and just do that, it's it's not that simple, right? Taco Bell cook can't cook a Michelin star, five-star meal. So you, you have to recognize that. And so that's why shortening the learning curve is really, really important because your clients can't afford your learning curve. You sell them an RVP that you shouldn't have sold because it wasn't a match, it wasn't a fit, you get fired. It's not a surprise. So those are the kinds of realities that we can make you aware of maybe before you step on a landmine. Quick peek of what we're going to be talking at the mastermind. Oh, Craig, I'm just going to slow them the slide. That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> You're not going to be able to figure that one out, but that's it. That's the new gem. Forget about the supply chain. But, uh, I think that's it, guys. Look, we're, we're looking forward to working with you guys. Uh, those that are taking us up on the offer, those that do business, we can't thank you enough. We look forward to helping you expand, grow your business. We're going to start building more and more resources around you guys as we grow here. And uh, we got an ear to the market. We're excited. Uh, those that are going after in Q4, get after. I see Michael Lutz just joined us. Guy's got six gigs working his ass off over there. Guy went from scratch, making it happen. I mean, Craig, what was he at your event three, four years ago now? First event attended. Yeah. Man, man, was he lucky to show up there. But went after it, took advantage of it. Now he's doing good. It's good to see everybody on here. Guys, uh, next Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern, we'll be having uh, the health plan, virtue health plan. The week after, we'll have the two consortiums. So join us uh, if you missed today's. Uh, a webinar. This is kind of what it was about, but I can send you the recording. Let us know. That being said, any final word, Craig? Yeah, maybe uh, maybe we'll go live when we're in Vegas at our, at our kind of a exclusive retreat there. Oh, I didn't even think of that. It's a good idea. That'd be we'll, fun. We'll, we'll give them the inside look, inside baseball look. Thanks for joining yeah. us, guys. As always, we will see you next Thursday. 
Same place, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Heads up advisor. See you later, guys. Bye.